I think, you know, our panel was really talking about um, relationships between our, our businesses and government. And I think, um, you know, we're finally in the Web3 industry starting to make some traction in the government sector, um, both with ICP, ourselves, you know, other players in the industry. And I think it's taken many years for us um, to kind of have this education process where we can educate policymakers to understand that, you know, embracing Web3 is not something necessarily to be afraid of, but can very much be a part of, you know, something that's very popular with governments these days, which is cost saving, right? Because it's more efficient and it's a better way to run your government on low cost decentralized infrastructure. Well, I'm a little biased here. So I actually think, you know, one of the, one of the most uh, genius pieces of marketing was when Gavin Wood decided to call it Web3, because I think that it encapsulates very simply the idea of why blockchain is important. And I say that having been in the internet business since the beginning, um, because to me, adding this secure decentralized layer that allows us to actually have secure communications or transactions from peer to peer, delivers on the original promise of the internet, right? Which is why I think it doesn't, un it doesn't undersell it to call it Web3. This really is the next version of the internet because we're actually fixing all the bits that, you know, 30 years ago we didn't imagine we would need. So we didn't design the internet that way, but now that we use it for everything, we have a version that actually includes all those functions. Although I think it's non-specific, which means that in the Web3, industry, we call it RWAs or real world assets, but actually it's a little bit of a cop out answer because it means everything, right? But I do think that that segments into two different types of real world assets. People from financial services think about real world assets as being the tokenization of other financial instruments, whether those are equities or bonds or private credit and all this kind of stuff. And that is, you know, by, by asset value, that's, that's the big piece of the pie. But there's the other side that lay people like myself think real world assets means real physical stuff, right? Whether it's commodities and agriculture, you know, crops, or it's your car or your house and your title deeds to your property. All of these things I think are coming on chain because having digital twins of these things that enable us to have um, digital lives for our physical stuff, I think is very much a part of Web3. Gaming is a key component for two reasons. One, um, to go back to my last answer, I think it's the original RWA for Web3, because at the end of the day, when we entered the blockchain industry, we did so because we wanted to tokenize in-game assets, because these are things that everybody owns, but they don't really own them. And so tokenizing them allows you to own those things, right? And so, I think gaming has a very key role to play because most new technology gets adopted because of consumer adoption first, right? And then after consumers, businesses and other people follow. That's true with the internet, with video recorders, with, you know, you name it, any technology, even smartphones. Um, and within consumer technology and consumer behavior, entertainment is the biggest thing, number one, and gaming is the biggest piece of entertainment, right? And so that's why it's going to lead. If this was 20 years ago, it might be video content, it might be audio content, other things. But gaming and interactive is actually bigger than those now.